Have you ever taken melatonin to help with sleep? But instead of waking up feeling refreshed, you felt groggy, wired, or even noticed that your blood sugar was acting strange? Well, you're not alone. Melatonin isn't a one-size-fits-all supplement. In fact, your genes may play a big role in how your body responds to it. So in today's video, we'll break down what melatonin actually does in the body, how genetics, especially the melatonin receptor gene, can make or break your experience with melatonin, the science on dosing and timing, and practical tips to naturally boost your melatonin without relying on pills. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board-certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize your mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So what is melatonin? Well, melatonin is often called the sleep hormone, but that only tells part of the story. It's produced in the pineal gland when darkness falls and signals to your brain and body that it's time to rest. But melatonin does far more than just regulate your sleep. You see, it acts as a potent antioxidant in the brain. It also supports your immune function. It helps to regulate inflammation. And interestingly, it actually interacts with your metabolism and blood sugar regulation. So while most people just think of melatonin only for insomnia or jet lag, its effects can actually ripple across your brain, mood, and metabolic health. And so how does melatonin actually work in the body? Well, melatonin works by binding to receptors called melatonin receptor 1A and melatonin receptor 1B, which are found in the brain and in other organs. In the brain, this binding helps set your circadian rhythm, your body's internal clock. But in the pancreas, melatonin receptor 1B activation actually suppresses insulin release. And that means that melatonin is directly connected to your blood sugar and energy metabolism. And this explains why taking melatonin at the wrong time, like late at night after snacking, can sometimes backfire. You see, your body will get mixed signals that it's bedtime, but also food time. And so now let's briefly talk on the research on melatonin and sleep. So what does the science actually say about melatonin supplements? When it comes to insomnia, a meta-analysis in 2013 found that melatonin reduced sleep latency and improved sleep quality in patients with insomnia. Another study looking at jet lag and circadian rhythm disorders was a Cochrane review in 2002, which was updated in 2009. And this concluded that melatonin is effective in preventing or reducing jet lag, particularly when traveling eastward across multiple time zones. When it comes to general insomnia, there were mixed results. A Cochrane review on melatonin for primary sleep disorders, which was done in 2005 and then updated in 2019, found that the evidence was actually mixed, where melatonin was helpful for some sleep onset issues, but not consistently beneficial for overall sleep maintenance. And here's the surprising part. Lower doses, around 0.3 to 1 milligram, often work better than the typical five to 10 milligrams that you'll see sold in stores because too much melatonin can actually desensitize your receptors or cause next day grogginess. So now let's talk about genetics and melatonin. And here's where genetics really make a difference. Starting with the melatonin receptor 1B gene, which codes for a melatonin receptor in the pancreas. And this receptor helps regulate your insulin release. And if you carry a variant in this gene, you may actually have higher fasting glucose and reduced insulin secretion, which can increase your risk for type 2 diabetes. And here's a key distinction with certain variants, where certain variants of the melatonin receptor 1B gene, melatonin itself doesn't stay in the blood longer. Instead, you have more receptor activity. So melatonin's effects on insulin are stronger and last longer. So that means if you take melatonin at night and or you eat late, your pancreas may suppress insulin into the next morning, 
which results in a higher fasting glucose, feeling sluggish, and a higher chance of side effects to melatonin like grogginess. On the other hand, another gene, which is the CYP1A2 gene, is the liver enzyme that clears melatonin. So if you have a slow CYP1A2, the hormone itself lingers in your bloodstream, so you have higher melatonin levels. And this causes prolonged sedation or morning brain fog, whereas fast metabolizers can actually break melatonin down so quickly that they'll barely feel it. And then there's the clock gene, which is your circadian master switch. And certain variants here are linked to being more of a night owl and struggling with circadian alignment. For these individuals, carefully timed melatonin can help shift your bedtime earlier. But timing is critical, as if melatonin is taken too late, it can actually reinforce a delayed rhythm instead of correcting it. And finally, the COMPT gene. COMPT helps to break down dopamine and norepinephrine. If you have a slow COMPT variant, your brain tends to run hotter with higher baseline neurotransmitter levels. Adding melatonin can actually hit harder, but this can lead to grogginess, vivid dreams, or a melatonin hangover. Where on the other hand, people with a fast comp tend to tolerate melatonin more smoothly. Now together, these four genes can explain why melatonin feels like a miracle for some and a nightmare for others. And so now let's move on to practical tips and strategies. So how do you use melatonin wisely? Well, first is to start low and go slow. Begin with micro doses like 0.3 milligrams to one milligram because more isn't better. And two, time it right. Take it 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime and try to avoid taking it in the middle of the night. Also avoid pairing melatonin with late night meals, especially if you carry that melatonin receptor 1B variant. If you're a night owl with that clock gene variant, consider taking melatonin earlier in the evening to gradually shift your circadian rhythm. Number three is support natural melatonin release. So get morning sunlight to reset your clock. Limit blue light at night with blue light blocking glasses or screen filters. And keep your sleep and wake times consistent. Also, nutrients like magnesium, zinc, and vitamin B6 will help your body produce melatonin naturally. And now the risk and side effects of melatonin. Well, melatonin is generally safe short term, but there are important cautions, such as grogginess, and next day drowsiness are the most common complaints and side effects, especially if the dose is too high or taken too late in the night. Vivid dreams or nightmares can also occur, and this is particularly true in people with the slow comp variant, so they need to be extra careful with taking low doses. Mood changes may also happen at higher doses, sometimes worsening depression. Blood sugar spikes can also occur if melatonin is taken with food, especially in those with the melatonin 1B receptor variant. CYP1A2 slow metabolizers will clear melatonin more slowly, which can lead to stronger effects, prolonged sedation, or morning fog. So who should avoid or be very cautious with melatonin? Well, melatonin may not be a good choice for you if you have poorly controlled diabetes, prediabetes or insulin resistance, particularly if you have that melatonin receptor 1B gene variant. If you're a child or adolescent, melatonin may not be for you unless it's directed by a specialist. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, um, the safety data is lacking, so probably don't wanna use melatonin in that population. If you take medications that interact with melatonin, such as blood thinners, sedatives, immunosuppressants, or you struggle with depression or mood disorders where melatonin may worsen symptoms at higher doses, or if you're a CYP1A2 slow metabolizer and already experience medication sensitivity or daytime fatigue, melatonin may not be right for you. It's also important to think lifestyle, your skills, not just pills, as adjusting light exposure, your meal timing, and sleep hygiene may have a bigger impact than any supplement alone. And that leads me to my final thoughts. See, melatonin is a fascinating molecule. It's not just about sleep, but about your entire circadian and metabolic health. And genetic factors, timing, and lifestyle all determine whether it will be your ally or your enemy. 
And if you've tried melatonin and it didn't work, don't give up on improving your sleep. Instead, focus on optimizing your light exposure, your sleep hygiene, and supporting natural melatonin production. And if you know your genetic profile, like having the melatonin receptor 1B variant, you can use that insight to personalize your approach. And if you don't know your genetic profile, check out the link in the description to order the genetic test with a personalized plan. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.